But clo- okay, Clovey, let's go to uh, let's go to this one because I think this might be interesting for a few of my listeners who listen to the show. Let's put this up here so I know which one I'm talking about. Boom, boom, boom. So, um, Virgil Abloh has just announced or just uh, launched actually the Louis Vuitton and Nigo collaboration that was kind of uh, that was kind of teased earlier on. This in the season, we kind of got a picture of Virgil and Nigo hanging out, and it was kind of you know Louis Vuitton and Nigo coming very soon, which is a very cool uh, collab. And I think if you, of course, if you're familiar with Virgil, you know he's got extensive experience, extensive history within streetwear. You also know that he's been somebody that's been a a, a big fan, a big champion of Nigo. I think for the most part, a lot of streetwear brand, a lot of streetwear designers, a lot of streetwear um, kind of uh, peeps industry professionals would probably hold Hiroshi Fujiwara and Nigo as at the same sort of level in terms of people to kind of look up to and aspire to be right they've all both been able to kind of rewrite the playbook in terms of what it means to be a streetwear designer uh, they've also been able to kind of dabble into different aspects of design of architecture um, of clothing of electronics collaboration whatever right they've designed everything from cafes to cafe cups to backpacks to you know um seller tape like everything under the sun they were able to kind of dab their finger in i think for the most part most streetwear individuals or professionals are generalists like i am i mean for the most part we don't really have a precise and exact skill so streetwear is a kind of natural home or natural kind of um learning or testing ground for you to kind of discover the things that you're interested in not interested in you know for um i think in that regard you can kind of design you can kind of start your brand and essentially kind of segue that brand into a way to kind of display your creative talents and then use those as opportunities to kind of pursue your other approach on the side whether it's furniture design whether it's art whether it's graphic design whatever you can do you can usually do it from the kind of remit of streetwear and obviously no bigger example no better example than it than nigo in recent years who's now kind of uh jumped off the abavian ape train and sort of gone head first in his human made um brand which i didn't know having spoken spoken about in the interview here with Virgil that he said that supposedly the entire uh, Nigo uh, the entire human 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 made uh, brand is essentially housed under one roof it's a completely vertical brand where it starts from ideation to essentially production all in one building which is pretty incredible but again you shouldn't be surprised with a Japanese brand that they do things to that kind of level so they shared the entire collection that Nigo's doing with Louis Vuitton it's called Louis Vuitton 2 or Louis Vuitton squared um, that's the kind of label that they're kind of running with uh, with the stuff they're doing with uh, Nigo and Virg- and Louis Vuitton for instance and again this comes off the back of the big collaboration Louis Vuitton did with Supreme uh, that was I think that was that the last collection that Kim Jones did, or was that there was one before after that? I'm not too sure, but the last kind of big streetwear kind of collaboration they did with the um, Louis Vuitton. And again, I just think this new collaboration is expertly done. They've kind of thrown the, the they've kind of thrown expectation out the window and sort of like leaned more into tailoring as opposed to the kind of quiet quote because the quintessential streetwear items like coach jackets and varsity jackets and bomber jackets, which they could probably easily do, and they've kind of gone into the more tailored uh, items which have kind of come out really really good um so this article here from vogue that quickly interviewed virgil speaks about the collaboration and uh and some kind of insights into his streetwear dead comments so the title says the following here virgil shows pics shares pics of the his louis vuitton square collaboration with nigo and clarifies the streetwear dead comment um so this is some of the images here uh here's the text of the article and again i'll link it to show notes for you guys to read it yourselves so this is the following here when Virgil announced his Louis Vuitton collaboration with Nigo in December, he gave props to the Japanese streetwear pioneer. Me being at Louis Vuitton is directly attributed to Nigo's work. Nigo has done work in the past, sorry. Ablo said, um, a collab project with him, it puts his work in the right context, which is definitely true. And again, that's something that you could always, you know, it, there's a lot of negative things said about Virgil, but one thing you can't not say about him is that he definitely uses his platform in order to kind of amplify the voice of people who have come before him and the people that are going to come after him. Um, that's something that again he's always paying it forward always paying it back and I think that really helps to kind of keep the scene alive because for the again because there's a lot of people within streetwear themselves a lot of professionals a lot of brand owners a lot of you know uh, marketing guys and that stuff who I've spoken to in the past who have a lot of bad things to say about Virgil but then when they meet him in real life they're all like you know jacking him off and trying to get a pair of off-whites and trying to get a pair of uh, free off-whites from, from him and stuff but a lot of those guys would even the, the haters who are you know hating to his face would have to admit that if he wasn't 
if he wasn't about, you know, streetwear might not be where it's at at the moment. It would obviously still be around. Kids would still be interested in wearing, you know, jeans and snapback hats and trainers and shit. But it, would it be at the level it is now? Would merch be at the level it is now with some brands? I don't know. So we have a lot to thank for him in that respect. Um, so here's the following article. It continues here. It says, The French luxury good house famously partnered with Supreme in 2017 when Kim Jones was still LVM, uh, Louis Vuitton's menswear designer. But his hookup is different. Uh, there are no logos for Nigo's brand, human made, on these clothes and accessories. In fact, there's not much streetwear in the collection at all. Let's not do the expected, is how Virgil characterized interaction between himself and his mentor and friend. That rings true with a statement Virgil made uh, for Days Magazine, published shortly after the Louis Vuitton and Nigo project was announced. I would definitely say that it's going to die, you know, like his time will be up, he said, Ablo said which obviously I didn't agree with. I made a, a video on that too. Um, summed up streetwear's fate at the time. As an offhand as the comment was see below it stirred up quite a lot of internet talk in industry and beyond the three months later ablo has some new thoughts on topic and i think i have some of my thoughts too um if you watch this video when i clip it afterwards i'm going to uh, attach a little link somewhere here to the video that they previously talking about virgil's comments so if you want to see that definitely click that but let's continue the interview here as i say so here's the interview um tell me about your friendship with nigo berg says and here's virgil um he's among the first role mentors i had in fashion uh since my trajectory was different had I been, quote, an unquote traditional designer, I might have gone to New York and apprenticed under Donna Karen. But since streetwear is a new genre of fashion design, those earliest mentors, the Yves Saint Laurent or the Balenciaga of streetwear, is Nigo. It's James Jebby who founded Supreme. They took what was organically happening within culture, skate, street brands, and they made hardcore brands from that. Um, Nigo, I was fortunate over 15 years ago to have met him in Japan. He took us under his wing and showed us the ropes of how he was building a, a, the brand at Baby Gap at the time. Um, and again, so again, a good little nod there to James Jebby of Supreme, bigging him up again, bigging up Nigo, telling people to put something into context, history of the brand, and you know, just again, using his platform the good way in order to kind of educate people who are reading it and kind of inform them that, you know, even though I'm doing amazing work now, these people have informed me so you can go and kind of dig in and do your own, do your own research. So the article continues here. Um, when was the, when was the, what was the process, sorry, of working with him like? So, Virgil says the following. We met in his studio in Tokyo. He has a completely vertical fashion brand with human made. In one building he designs, does the photo shoot, does the manufacturing. I was impressed by that. We had subsequent meetings in my studio in Paris. They were really hands-on. Our strong point is the art direction and the concept. What people might not be, what people might be surprised by is the is that two guys known for street rate history and, and the ability, the collection is completely opposite. That was our starting point. Let's not do the expected. Let's not put streetwear in a box. That's the epiphany within the collaboration. Um, you're doing a lot of uh, tailoring together. Uh, it says here, and he says, yeah. If you were to say our names uh, that we're doing something at Louis Vuitton, you would almost be uh, able to predict it. But to me, fashion with a capital F is supposed to take you on a journey to lead. Uh, the last four I did an interview where I quote where a quote was taken out of context. My sentiment was that streetwear will die. Virgil Abloh says streetwear is dead. Is that the quote heard around the world, uh, around the fashion world? So him, here's him explaining it. Yeah, I'm such a novice. I don't realize that I can, uh, that fingers can go even that far. I'm a little bit naive in that way. It was literally me in the kitchen just riffing on what had been to uh, what I'd been thinking. I didn't say it to be polarizing. Eh, I don't know about that. You know, he comes from the school of Kanye West. He has said some inflammatory things in the past to get clicks and whatever it may be. But I do think the comment was the reaction to it was a bit OTT. Um, obviously, streetwear, if you've been a fan of streetwear since the beginning or since, you know, its infancy, you will know that it's always goes through these cycles. There's a bit of lulls. You know, Bobby Hundred will write a massive op-ed about the scene dying. Some brand will come out of nowhere and rip Bobby. The brand will pop out of the woodwork. There's stuff happening always at the time, right? Streetwear is always kind of going through this cyclical phase. And it always has these kind of lull periods. And the fact that fashion is now kind of fell out loving streetwear, right? Everyone's kind of, the return of tailoring, the return of tailoring, right? Which is kind of like dog whistle code for like, get these fucking skateboard cunts out of our fashion shows, right? Um, that is natural that people will now, because those say people who have now kind of transitioned from streetwear to fashion in order to keep their jobs, they're going to want to say streetwear is dead because they want to, you know, stay within their fashion school. So I get that. Stay within their fashion, with their new, fa new fashion friends, you know, because I'd imagine if you're a streetwear head and you've been used to, you know, buying your own beers for your store launches and stuff on a Thursday, to then go to fashion where, you know, you get the benefit of, you know, uh, collaborating with Diageo or something on, on the launch of an event, it definitely would be more comforting to go there where there's loads more girls, if you're into girls, there's a lot more glitz and glamour, a lot more money, right? A lot more longevity maybe in that regard because, you know, uh, for the most part, you have a job for life in fashion. Streetwear can be a little bit thick in that regard. Um, 
a couple of missteps and your brand's completely dead, right? I can think of like Mishka as a good example. Um, so I get the allure of it, but to say Streetwear is dead or is going to die, ugh, bit of a stretch. So he says the following here, I didn't say to be polarizing. I think that in the context of the conversation with Nigo, if you speak to anyone that's been in Streetwear for more than 15 years, or last 15 years, sorry, it's always had this sort of nine lives, dying and coming back and dying and coming back. There's so many first generation Streetwear brands uh stores and retailers the market it wasn't as vibrant as it is now so they went out of business and people don't remember those uh obviously a good example would be the hideout which you know if the, if the hideout was still around now they'll be making money hand over fist for sure especially if they were abreast of all the newer brands they didn't just try and push neighborhood on kids who don't give a shit about shin takazawa but if they were able to kind of tap into the new brands that are around and sort of like get that going it'll be nuts uh the market wasn't vibrant nigo had nigo's had has had projects before He's had many a brand, many identities within streetwear. Partially, what I meant was that it will die, is that new things will cut, will like tailoring from guys like Nigo and me will be born from the regeneration of it. Eh, I don't think you could... <sighs> tailoring isn't going to replace streetwear. Other brands will replace the brands that we know and love now. It is what it is, but tailoring won't replace it. Like, kids are still going to want to wear a, a pullover hoodie, a snapback hat and some trainers. Do you know what I mean? Like, that is the way it's going to be for a long period of time. Especially if you look at... You only have to look at some of the streetwear style pictures to see that streetwear's influence is still there to be seen in it. Um, back to collaboration. You've put the LV Damir check to good use. It's not something you've d done before, right? He says, yeah, 100%. Um, I thought this was a perfect project to do like, something like this. The mood of the collection started off with our appreciation of the UK dandy culture and the mod era, Savaro tailoring, which obviously is a heavy uh, inspiration of Nigo too, if you're familiar with the stuff he's done with Bape, uh, especially the older stuff in the 90s or early 2000s. Uh, that gave us a silhouette. But when it came to adding our own texture within a silhouette, that was very much using the codes of the house. When I think of Japan, the interviewer says, I think of denim. You've done some amazing things with denim here. What the Japanese are known for is great archiving and reinterpretations of the Americana. Nigo was one of the most formidable collections. He has some of the very early Lee and Levi's pieces that were ever found. His personal style, he's a true connoisseur. He buys outfits on Savile Row. He goes, to the, he goes for the experience, the custom bespoke nature of it all. Um, also, this his collection, his personal collection of denim. When it was a matter of developing his pieces, I thought that was the uh, most authentic using him as a muse. So his influence is in the bags. Uh, he had his brand called Ice Cream with a drippy signature. I thought, what if we made the playfulness of a, a little more serious and merged it with Louis Vuitton? And I've seen you've done a hooded bomber with a Mount Fiji on the back. Yeah, we do those projects in our sleep. We didn't want that collection to be 100% that. My program at Louis Vuitton, the overarching vision is the father to son. To, so having a portion of, of more mature pieces to youthful pieces. Let's talk about the LV2 label. Is it applicable to you and Nigo or is it something that you're going to do f with other people going forward? He said, something for Nigo and me specifically. It's like a new rap group. Nigo came up with the name LV2. We were from we were from outside having an opinion and that's just styling it. We're now inside designing it and styling it. Uh, says, what's the most important thing you learned from Nigo? In a sense, it's detail, a Japanese precision, but also generosity. He's extremely heartfelt. In an, I'm American and I work a lot in Europe. In Paris, fashion house can be cutthroat. It can have this uh, manic feeling. In America, it's very workhorse. Working with him and having him in the studio, seeing his deposi de deposition and how he has thinking of the challenge and making tailoring and how all and how to refine all these ideas. He did it in a very respectful, calm, polite, but very precise way. Exactly. Absolute ninja, isn't it? So is this a register one-off? Yeah. But as we're finally finished, there's uh, already been talks so that this could be ongoing logic. Of course, it's ongoing. If it sells out in minutes, like I'm assuming it will do, they'll keep on pumping it out because, you know, at the end of the day, money wins. So yeah, I think both sides are open to it. So I wouldn't rule that out for other things to come. Uh, I can say that the future will evolve would involve a way of activating this collection when it comes time to release that will be more immersive than just simply putting it out into stores we both have a passion for um eventizing these moments so not just the clothes it's the context and again it's all very well 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 done loads of mod culture elements to it if you're, if you're a big fan of the smiths you'll like this collection uh some great sunglasses some great suits the Damir print, which we haven't seen him done previously, has been reinterpreted there with the drip. Sort of like inspiration from the ice cream logo. Looks very cool there. Some great uh, sunglasses. Great detailing on the... on the Is that an M3B jacket that Nigo's kind of always kind of pumping out there, reinterpreting his own ways. And amazing and valuable with those. Actually, maybe that might be the bomber. The bomber jacket here with the... 
with the mount feature on the back is very well made that check damia suit is just absolutely beautiful and so that side bag again again the gray looks fucking incredible doesn't it really nice you've got these uh metal toe exposed uh loafers that remind me of a uh, is it western i've got that brand is it a western brand that everyone was popping back in the day you've got this amazing uh denim outfit here is that a chill jacket or denim suit it's like a denim suit right with a sort of like a faux denim a damier print with these sort of wallaby s shoes as well he's done really well in again the legal touch this collection is very evident very heartfelt very very well done um the bags everything and that will sell out they've got an amazing scarf the logo the belt is great uh i like the fact that it's been italicized a little bit a little bit of a swirl in the end of the logo it looks fucking beautiful some nice uh mountain inspired uh boots there great shirt troll jacket sort of style looking coat there as well that would be very popular the backpack is fucking gorgeous nice hat Louis Vuitton Paris is that like kind of like a driving cap I think maybe with, without a strap on the back of it looks really impressive as well just all in all a very very beautiful and well done collection I think it's gonna absolutely fly out the fly out the stores again I'm not I'm not uh, adverse to saying it's better than Supreme collaboration but it's definitely up there um, they've got some great tassel loafers as well there that look very beautiful and very well done and just again very very artfully done very well put together and again this is going to look even better once uh the magazines get get a hold of them and be able to kind of style it in their own way i like quite the styling of the look don't get me wrong but are you good to see what um other fashion editors kind of do with this stuff and how they reinterpret it um in their fashion schedule so yeah definitely check this out when it's available no idea the date so far but definitely keep your eyes open for that man it looks fucking gorgeous, man. Absolutely gorgeous. A big, big fan of it. Wow. Very well done. 